Today we're doing sloppy joes. Homemade sloppy joes. This recipe is a winner. It is the one you're gonna to wanna to make for your next like potluck, your next family reunion. It is, it is so yummy. It is the sloppy joe recipe, you guys. So I'm Jen. And I'm Barbara. And we're with Pressure Cooking today. We have another recipe if you're looking for a quick weeknight dinner, uh, that's on our website and we'll post a link down in the description. Um, this one takes a little bit longer. It's not um, complicated, most of it is just rest time, you take it and leave it, but the, these little steps make a big difference. So we're gonna start off by adding a combination of baking soda, salt, and water to our ground beef. Uh, we're using 85% lean ground beef here, and this is a trick we learned when we um, were developing our recipe for our Instant Pot chili. And it, it makes such a difference in your ground beef, you guys. It um, makes it cook up it holds onto the water a lot better. Um, it uh, releases a lot less water as it cooks, so you don't have to like drain the grease. It just holds on to that. So you can brown two pounds at one time. I'll, you don't have to brown in batches. So even though we're gonna we're gonna put the baking soda in and we're gonna let it rest for 20 minutes, and you can skip this step if you want, absolutely. But it won't save you as much time as you might think because you will have to drain the grease and um, brown in batches. So it, it just makes the beef better. It, it, it tastes so much better. We, when we're not crunched for time, we do this with our ground beef tacos. We do this with our chili. Pretty much any time we use ground beef and we're not cooking from frozen or cooking like in a hurry, uh, we, we use the step now. It, it just changes it. It's so good. So, so that's all there is to the first step. And then you just let it rest for 20 minutes. Yep. Yeah. Just make sure it's mixed in well. All right, so it's been 20 minutes. Our beef has sat in that baking soda mixture. Let it absorb in nicely. We've got our saute pan on hot. Uh, normally what we do when we're cooking at home while the meat is sitting, we um, measure the spices and the, uh, the tomato mixtures together. Thought that'd be a little boring for you to watch us do it on camera. There's a number of them. Yeah, so we're just gonna go ahead and put the oil in the pot. And we're going to saute our onions with some more baking soda. And the reason we do that... The baking soda helps the onion uh, break down a little bit. So instead, when you're eating your sloppy joe, instead of um, biting into like a big thick onion, you can, it just kind of helps it break down a little bit more into the sauce. Um, again, if you like big oniony bites in your sloppy joe, you can skip the baking soda step. And you saute them for what, two, three minutes until they're translucent? Yep. Okay, so now our onion is translucent. We'll go ahead and add the garlic. And the garlic, you just want to cook for about 30 seconds before you add the beef back to the pot. Just want to cook off that raw flavor of the garlic, which happens pretty quickly. It softens and mellows and becomes a lot tastier. Okay, that looks great. I'll let you scoop. <laughs> okay. So what are your secrets to browning beef, Mom? Well, first I want to incorporate this onion and garlic mixture. And then you'll want to just let it sit and not stir it so much so that it browns. I tend to stir it too often. Uh, we have this little uh, hamburger chopper, is that what it's called, from OXO. This is one of my favorite tools. It's really satisfying to just sit and smash it along the bottom. Um, but this is, the, you do this a little later, right? You don't do it right from the beginning. Yeah, when you want to, to break it up. Yeah. So you, you stick with the spoon until it's mostly browned, or do you just always use the spoon? Well, I'll probably switch once it starts to brown up and then okay. makes it easier. There's really no right or wrong. It's true. Whatever works best for you. But for me, whatever works best for her is, <laughs> is often a, a good way to do it. But it really does make it easier if you have this hamburger tool uh, just to break it up. And of course, for sloppy joes, you want it broken up nicely. Do you just leave it like that? <laughs> I often do. Do you really? I'm always afraid I'm going to melt it. Oh, well. 
I think I it's, don't know, maybe it's, it's silicone, so it's super strong. good for high heat. There you go. And, and on saute, you really don't get as hot as you would if you in were. an oven. It's like it. Okay, that's good to know. I've melted more than my fair few of spatulas cooking on the stovetop. Um, <laughs> once I even melted a, a knob of a pressure cooker cooking in the pressure cooker. I'm not tall enough, so I was in a hurry and I was sauteing and the knob of the pressure cooker <laughs> was right here on the inside. It's a disaster. But see how quickly that's browning up and, and eliminating a lot of that water that you often get when cooking ground beef and that's because of baking the soda. baking soda. Isn't that an awesome tip? Alright, so once the meat is brown and crumbly, you'll go ahead and add your spices that you measured previously. Just go ahead and shake them on top. And then you want to get them stirred in real nice. Come on. Um, in this step, it's important you want to make sure that they don't burn to the bottom of the pressure cooker. So you want to make sure you're giving them really good stirs. And just keep an eye on that bottom. If you start seeing them stick to the bottom, give them a good scrape. And if that's still not enough, you can just pour in a little bit of your beef broth just to loosen them up. Okay, so it looks like they're evenly mixed. Okay, so now we'll pour in our beef broth, a third of a cup. And then we want to distribute our hamburger nice and evenly along the bottom of the pressure cooker. Give it a good scrape to make sure there's nothing yeah, stuck. Yeah, just make sure you don't feel any burning on the bottom. You want it to feel nice and clean because you don't want to get a burned nose. It might be a little sticky right there. So just stir that off and then make a nice flat level. And then we've got our tomato spices. I like to, when I pour it in, I like to put my spoon down low. And then when I pour it on, the spoon kind of breaks the fall, so it kind of is a gentle. Because we're not mixing in the tomatoes. No. Sometimes tomatoes can sink down to the bottom of your pressure cooker, and that will give you the burn notice. You don't want that. So they're just nice and even on top. That looks pretty good. Right, and so the tomatoes in here are a combination of? Ketchup and a, a tomato paste for flavor, and then the crushed tomatoes. Yeah, that you buy in a can at yep. the supermarket. So, okay, now we'll lock the lid in place. Hit cancel, lock the lid in place, and cook for 20 minutes. Okay, let's go ahead and release the pressure. All the pressure is gone already, so we can go ahead and open it up. Okay, so we'll give it everything a good stir. We'll mix those tomatoes in. Mix it in with the beef. So at this point in the recipe, you can choose. Um, I like to use a potato masher. You can see the beef still has some kind of big clumps to it. Um, if you use a potato masher, it kind of mashes everything down nice and fine, so I like to do that. Do this. <laughs> okay. All right, so we've mashed it and everything's a little bit more evenly sized. We'll go ahead and add the vinegar. It's a red wine vinegar and you add it to add a little bit of acidity. Acidity. It cuts down on the sweetness yeah, of the tomatoes. Yeah, it really helps with the sweetness. It was just, just a little bit of a tang. Yeah, much better with it than without it. You could also sub in apple cider vinegar if you prefer. And then some people like their uh, sloppy joes a little bit runny. This is a little bit too thin for me. Um, so I like to combine um, some cornstarch and cold water to make a thickener. Yeah, just make up a little cornstarch slurry. You want to use cold water yeah. so that the cornstarch doesn't start to activate. And mix it well. You don't want any clumps of cornstarch in there, otherwise it'll stay clumpy in your sloppy joe mixture. And then we'll just use the saute fixture function, saute function to thicken it up. Add that. Okay. So cornstarch doesn't activate as a thickener until it reaches a certain uh, temperature right around boiling, so you want to uh, just keep stirring um, and let it come to temperature. 
it's already quite hot in that pot, so there's a good chance it's already, it's looking pretty thick. It might have already reached that. Um, it's still a little saucier than I like, so I'm going to just leave it on the saute function, let it boil down just a little bit. It also will continue to thicken as it cools, so you want to keep that in mind and you don't want, you don't want it to look perfect before you take it off the heat, otherwise it's going to be too thick by the time it cools down to eating temperature. What do you call it? Eating temperature? Non-mouth burning <laughs> temperature. You want to stir it quite frequently because you don't want it to burn on the bottom. No. If it's boiling too quickly, you can reduce the temperature on the front and you can also just lift it up away from the heating element and that will cool it down quickly. Uh, we're using the... Instant Pot Pro. Which has these nice handles that don't get hot, makes it easier. If, if you don't have one with handles, then you just want to be sure you use some hot pads because yeah. the inner pot does get really hot. The Instant Pot Pro is my current favorite of the different pressure cooker models. So this is my go-to in the kitchen. All right, so it's nice and thick now. I think we'll get ready. Go ahead and serve it, it up. Okay, we'll put that there. Okay, so let's dish it up. Scoop it in. it kind of sloppy, don't we? Sure. <laughs> I'm like that so you can see it. There you go. It's good. Um, you'll have to let us know what you think. So leave us a comment. Let us know how it works for you. It's, it's pretty new on our site and it's getting great reviews. So we hope we give it a try. Yeah, and be sure to like and subscribe for more recipes. Mm -hmm.